Well, good morning and a happy Memorial Day to everyone. Today is Monday, May 28th. It's an overcast day in Harleysville. It's like 57 degrees today and my, 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 we've certainly had a lot of rain here in Pennsylvania Zone 6 and so the garden's really been off to a, a slow start this season here. Lately I've been thinking of my garden as a painting, as a work of art. A painting that's evolving and progressing over time. You know, where the soil is the canvas and the flowers and your vegetables are the paint. You know, think back in the beginning of April is when I started my first garden video for this season. You know, the garden was resting over winter. It's came out, it's come out of hibernation. And so it's like a blank canvas. And so, you know, over time you plant your cold weather crops in the soil, you direct sow your seeds, and then your warm, warmer weather comes along and you plant your flowers and your warm weather crops. But over a period of months, you know, you get to watch those seeds you direct sow in your garden, they pop their heads out of the soil and they become vegetables or leafy greens. Your flowers start to to develop and grow and mature in your garden. You know, we have zinnias here, we have vinca in the garden, we have purple wave petunias, and so on. And so the painting develops over time. You know, your work of art, your garden as a work of art. And so it's just something I've been thinking about lately. As you watch my garden videos, you get to see it evolve over time, which I think is something exciting because, you know, as gardeners, we get to to nurture and mature these plants. Well, today I did want to take you on a garden tour. I call it my backyard grocery store. And so I'm really excited also to share with you some tips as I take you on this tour. I hope this aerial view of my garden gives you some ideas for your garden. And so follow me along through my garden trellis and we'll begin the tour. So I have here in front of me my 18 foot by 30 foot raised garden bed. Actually a couple years ago I added this wood border around this bed here in order to elevate the soils a little bit more above the the uh, existing ground. In fact, you know, that's one reason I'm really glad that I have raised beds because we've had so much rain here lately. And because they're elevated beds above the existing grade, you know, your plants aren't going to drown. So anyhow, right here in front of me, I, I'm growing some of my King Arthur green bell peppers. I have uh, three rows of those, so I have 24 pepper plants. And then also I have five of my basil plants. My wife and I, we decided to grow a few more basil plants this year because we wanted to freeze some of the basil over winter. And then along the edge here, I also have my uh, six of my classic eggplants growing. and. Uh, I also have my wooden stakes here that I installed for my green bell peppers. You want to make sure you support your green bell peppers. And then right here in front of me I have some of my plum crimson tomatoes. These are great for canning because they're a meaty fleshy tomato. And then I also support these using a heavy duty tomato cage. They're about five, six dollars a piece. And for me, this is just some, something that's quick and simple. And these are determinate tomato plants. They're bush type tomatoes, so you don't have to prune them. Once you put your cage on, you, you set it and forget it. And it's easy also to harvest your 
tomatoes around these cages. And then right here, I have some of my mountain fresh tomatoes. And so I have 12 of the mountain fresh tomatoes. Or actually, these are mountain spring tomatoes. I have some mountain fresh in the back. And then these are 12 of the plum crimson. Just recently, I purchased a new lens for my camera, and I just put the lens on. It's actually a 10 millimeter to 18 millimeter ultra wide angle lens. And so it's going to give us a broader picture of my garden as I take you on this tour. So I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to work out. So these tomatoes and your peppers and your eggplant, you know, they, they all bear fruit. So you want to make sure you provide a good six to eight hours of sunlight for those. You know, the more the better, I always say. And then your leafy greens like your lettuce, your kale, your Swiss chard, uh, collard greens, they all can get away with four to six hours of sunlight. So you really want to be mindful of that when you're, you're uh, planting your vegetables out in your garden. And so also on the end of my raised bed here, I have some of my gypsy broccoli uh, planted, planted there in um, a couple months ago. And so let's take a look at the, my low tunnel hoop house where I have that broccoli growing under. Before we take a look at the broccoli, I did want to mention that as you look out in my garden bed there, you can see that I'm using a, a black plastic. It's either a four or six mil black plastic. I ended up buying a roll from one of the box stores. It was a 20 foot by 100 foot roll. And I reuse this plastic. It probably lasts me about three, four years. But, uh, you know, there's an article, a couple articles online that that tells us and teaches us that actually using black plastic is considered an organic material to use in your garden. So I was thinking about maybe I can do a video on that to just to, for us all to gain a little bit more insight on that because I think there's some people that are maybe worried about something that might leach out from the plastic. And so I think that might be a, a good, make a good video sometime in the future. So anyhow, let's take a look at that uh, low tunnel hoop house that I have the broccoli growing under. So back in the beginning of April is when I planted my broccoli out here in the garden. I have 18 plants growing under this low tunnel hoop house. And this low tunnel hoop house is basically four feet wide and maybe three feet high and about 15 feet long. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six of my hoops here. And these hoops are constructed out of your half inch rigid tubing. And so I thought I would take the cover off so we could take a look underneath this. So here in Pennsylvania, I have to worry about certain bugs. You know, you have the, the cabbage butterfly. Did you ever see that? white butterfly or yellowish butterfly flying around your garden. Well, what they do is they lay eggs underneath your leaves here and then develop into worms and just destroy your plants. And so growing my brassica plants, you know, my kale and my, uh, my broccoli here, growing them under the row covers just protects them from the, the insects because that way I don't have to use any type of pesticides in my garden. I always emphasize 100% organic gardening here. But these broccoli plants just thrive underneath this row cover. You know, the row cover allows the air to pass through in the rain. And you know, these leaves are all covered with dew right now or water because we just had some rain overnight. And so let's take a closer look at how beautiful these plants are doing underneath this row cover.
Another thing I wanted to mention about this broccoli too is that you can also eat the leaves. I did a video on that a while back as far as eating the leaves of your broccoli, but you know these leaves are very similar to collard greens and so say you've planted all this broccoli out in your garden but you didn't plant collard greens. Well certainly you can come you know during the growing process of this of these greens and just take off some of these leaves. But you can just see how beautiful they are. There's very little holes in these leaves. Also right in front of the broccoli here I planted some of these this romaine lettuce and you know I always plant it on the edge of my garden because I want it close to the kitchen. Also underneath that black plastic before I forget to mention I do have a, an irrigation drip system that I use here in my garden to water underneath the plastic. I made my drip system out of half inch PVC plastic and then I just drilled some 1 16th inch holes uh, through the piping and so that drip system you know lasts me year after year because it's heavy duty PVC plastic. So let's go take a look at the back garden. And so I thought I would start over in this end of the garden and then work to my right here. But, you know, as you can see, my painting or work of art, my garden, is starting to develop and grow. Here in front of me I have my elephant ears and then I have Titan Punch Vincas. These pretty flowers that add a nice punch of color. Our frost date is May 15th and so I planted my elephant ear bulbs I had stored down the basement in some plastic containers and I bought these locally from Ray's Greenhouse but you can see my painting is, is at its early stages and then over here, I have a sun gold cherry tomato that's going to be growing up this rope here. I call it the rope and twist method that I use. And I just twist the rope around the tomato plant as it, as it uh, continues to grow. And this tomato plant will grow up and over the trellis, probably reach about 12 to 14 feet. And so we just love our, our sun gold cherry tomatoes here in the garden. So let's just take a closer look at some of these plants that are at their small stage right now. I also have like a two foot by eight foot trellis that I use made out of chicken wire, but I'm going to be growing up my climbing spinach, otherwise known as Malabar spinach. And right now I just have some some small plants growing out of the soil here. I did direct sow some, some of these seeds a couple weeks ago, and so they seem to take a while to germinate these Malabar spinach. And so let's head over this way and we'll take a look and see what's in this garden bed. You can see right here in front of me I have my little garden fountain that I built on the end of my 4 foot by 32 foot raised garden bed. In fact I have three that size that are 4 feet by 32 feet long and they're divided into 8 foot sections. But I did a video a couple years ago on how you can install this in your garden for like $65. It's just been a beautiful addition to my garden, you know. Listening to the fountain run, it's very relaxing and peaceful and, and therapeutic and it also attracts birds to the garden. So let's take a look at this next bed here where I have some sweet potatoes growing. So these next three sections that are four foot by eight foot, this one right here in front of me I have some yams growing in this. This year at Ray's Nursery or Ray's Greenhouse in Telford, PA, I purchased 40 of these potato slips, sweet potato slips, and they were 20 cents a piece. And so 
years past, I realized that the yams, I get my biggest bang for my buck. You know, I get I got a, a good harvest from growing these yams. And so this year, all I planted in my garden was yams. And so, you know, gardening's a big learning curve. And so, you know, full of trials and errors. And, you know, you learn from your mistakes and, and then you move on. But uh, planting sweet potatoes, uh, it's something that's really easy to grow in your garden. And they like a good, again, they like warm weather, warm feet, and so you want to make sure your last frost date is passed in your area. And then in these two beds here, I have some sangria watermelon growing. I have some, some Athena muskmelon cantaloupe growing. And then I have some Waltham butternut squash also growing in these gardens. And, you know, I fill my raised garden beds here with a composted leaf mulch that I end up getting from Barnside Compost. This year I did end up getting five yards of it. I think a, a five yards plus delivery was, was $205. I do have a compost pile that I have every year, but I can't generate enough compost for my garden beds. And that's why I ended up getting a, a, a bulk delivery like that. It's the cheapest way versus buying it in bags. And then on the end of my raised garden bed there, I have two of my Sun Gold Cherry tomatoes. This year I ended up buying Seven of seven Sun Gold cherry tomato plants from Ray's Greenhouse. They were dollar twenty-five a piece. And you want to make sure you don't prune your Sun Gold cherry tomatoes. You know, maybe let them grow up your trellis a couple feet. Maybe prune the suckers there. But that once they reach a certain height, just let them do their own thing, and you'll be amazed that the, you'll get a much greater harvest from your from your uh, plants without having to prune them. But uh, I have the Sun Gold Cherry tomatoes growing up the arch trellis over there, there at the end of my garden bed. So let's take a closer look. Good morning, Bailey. How are you? I see Bailey's joining us out in the garden. He's a good boy. I also use hemp twine to support my tomatoes going as they grow up the arch trellis there. You can buy a, a small roll of that at the hardware store for a couple dollars, but what I do is I end up buying, just cutting a bunch of this hemp twine at once and all at once, and then I just, I have like a dozen pieces here. And then I just lay them on the ground here that way I don't have to be getting the roll out each time I go to tie my tomato plants to this trellis. Also here you can see I have, this is a, a kale, a kale plant that overwintered and from last year and so I've actually still been harvesting the leaves from them and I also like eating the flowers. They seem to be nice and tasty and of course we all know how healthy kale is here but yeah, right here in front of me I have my watermelon growing and my cantaloupe. I also have these wire fence sections laid over these plants while they're small so the deer can come in here and, and eat them. Now And also now that my woods are really starting to grow up around the garden, the weeds are really high. And that's almost acts as a natural fence because Deer by nature really like to take the path of least resistance. So right now, they're, they don't really come into my garden area. Maybe once those sweet potato vines start to grow and grow out more, they may come in and usually around harvest time, they start eating the leaves on my plants, which is sometimes helpful for me out in the garden. So right here, you can see in this container here, I have another elephant ear plant growing. Like I had the one growing over there at the end of my garden structure, but I just love these elephant ears in my garden. They had a nice tropical look, a nice lush look, and so uh, 
you can just put these down in, in your basement or garage, store them year after year once you initially buy the bowl. But over here in these containers, I have my canna lilies planted. And again, they're going to get four or five feet high. And they just have a beautiful, vibrant red flower on this plant. And they're part of that art piece of art, that work of art, you know, as the garden progresses during the season, as it evolves, these red uh, canna lilies are going to just start to bloom and they're going to just be a beautiful part of the, the uh, painting that's growing and developing over time. Also here in front of me too, I have a, a uh, this is a zucchini plant that I have in a container because zucchinis can get really large, like four feet wide, and so they can really overcome a, a raised garden bed if you're planting them in your garden. So I plant a lot of my zucchini in containers, and the, all these containers here in front of me, I did a video a couple years ago about how you can build these indestructible raised garden beds out of those 50 blue 55 gallon drums that you normally you can see sometimes on the internet or on eBay but I was able to buy those drums for five dollars a piece and then over here on the end I have some more canna lilies growing here on the end of my outdoor garden structure and so here on our middle raised bed my four foot by 32 foot bed here on the end I have four of my Amish paste tomatoes plants growing. Amish paste variety is a, again it's a fleshy meaty variety of tomato that that's great for canning. You know my wife and I we grant can like 75 quarts of tomato sauce and probably another 30 quarts of zesty salsa and so one thing I always encourage gardeners to do is plant plenty of tomatoes because they're so expensive to buy during the season. And then here at the end of our wooden trellis, I have two, two of my sun gold cherry tomato plants growing. And so they're going to grow up and over that trellis. And then right behind me here, I have some of my curly leaf kale under my low tunnel hoop house. So why don't I take this row cover off and we'll take a look at how healthy and thriving these plants are underneath the cover. I have 12 of my curly leaf kale transplants that I planted in these raised beds and so I need to get in there and do a little bit of weeding too but they're just nice and protected underneath that row cover being protected from that cabbage butterfly and from the uh, aphids and I always encourage gardeners is you know to take a little bit of time a little bit of money up front and install these row covers you know, you'll have these tubes, you know, basically for a long, long time. So you just initially have to buy the tubing. And, you know, those row covers last me a couple years. But anyhow, you don't have to worry about the garden pests when you grow under these row covers. And it makes your garden season a lot more enjoyable uh, year by year. And so let's take a closer look at these beautiful kale plants. And so those curly leaf kale plants are just thriving underneath the row cover. And then, then on this next bed here, what I did is a couple months ago, in late March, I direct sowed two rows of curly leaf kale here. And I didn't even thin these out. I just direct sowed the seeds maybe two inches apart and just let them come all, all come up in one area. Like I said, I didn't even go through and thin these. And, and these are just really doing really well right now. Right now, the, it seems like the aphids or the, the cabbage butterfly 
it's still still early in the season, but uh, we're gonna we'll eat this kale here, and then once we're finished eating this kale, we'll start eating the kale from these two beds here. But let's take a closer look here at this these uh, kale plants here that are all in a row. And then on the very end here of the, my long bed here, I have some red beets growing. I planted like four rows, four eight foot rows here. And so I'll probably be having red beets in about another month here. And then let's walk around here over to this garden. Again, I have another arch trellis that I made out of a cattle panel trellis. You can buy these from Tractor Supply for around, probably around $25. But they just make a great durable trellis in your vegetable garden. And then I also have two of my sun gold cherry tomato plants that will be growing up these. And then here in front of me I have four of my bush type cucumbers. You know we just love the cucumbers here in our family. Especially since my wife and I are, you know, we're plant based. We've adopted this type of lifestyle about five, six years ago. But you know, ever since I've adopted this type of lifestyle, my garden has taken on a whole new meaning for me because it's become my major fuel source for healthy living. So anyhow, behind these bush cucumbers, I have six of my sonic tomato plants. They're called sonic. They are an indeterminate variety, which means they can, they're gonna, here they're gonna get a good six to eight feet long. And I have six of that variety planted there. And then right here in front of me, I have some of my my favorite Swiss chard. It's actually a Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard variety. And uh, I just love the Swiss chard. It's in the spinach family. You know, spinach typically bolts once the, it gets hot out. But the uh, Swiss chard leaves are very similar to the spinach leaves. And, you know, they're all full of phytonutrients, you know. and Antioxidants are very healthy for our bodies. And then right here in front of me also, this is where I have four of my mountain fresh tomatoes. Again, some good heavy duty tomato supports and these are great for in sandwiches. So let's just take a closer look at my cucumbers and Swiss chard. And then I'll, we'll take a look at my last two beds right down there on the end. So in the end of my bed here, I have four more of the Amish paste tomatoes. Again, they're great for canning. And then underneath this, it's about a five foot long uh, hoop house here. I have some of my Olympia spinach growing. And then also along this bed here, I have more of my yams growing. And so, you know, year after year, I. My wife and I, we decide on what type of vegetables we like to grow. It's always fun and experimenting with different vegetables, but you know, over the years, you, you find your, out which ones are your favorite vegetables to grow in the garden. And I always encourage gardeners to keep a journal. Year after year, you know, write down your trials and errors and when you direct sowed your seeds out in the garden and planted your transplants. And by keeping a journal year after year, Keep a history of your garden, you know, and your garden pests, you know, what, what affects, what garden pests affect certain vegetables. And it's just going to be nice to be able to look back and, you know, you can learn as, and grow as you, as your garden evolves as far as knowing which ones were plants to plant each year. Well, I hope this garden tour was able to give you some tips and ideas in your vegetable garden. You know, I had someone leave a comment yesterday. His name is Arnie. And he says here, wow, seeing your introduction, it seems that you're involved in a lot of great stuff. 
Thanks for the video for us young guns and greenhorns. And so I really like that comment that he left. Uh, one of our beginning introductions of Plant Smart Living, you know, we showed my workshop downstairs and my my work truck that I work out of, uh, we showed that backing up in the video. Since then I've changed it mostly to to our vegetable garden here, which is our main emphasis. But I've been, guard, uh, been a contractor for over 40 years and now I work for, for in my own business. I'm, I do a lot of electrical and plumbing and I used to build additions and garages and that sort of thing. But uh, having Plant Smart Living as a YouTube platform has, has been a great platform for me to share all the knowledge I've gained over the years. i have now 63 years old and when I was 12 years old I realized that I wanted to be a carpenter and so ever since then I you know my mind is like a sponge I just love to learn new things but uh, I started my own business when I was 20 years old and ever since then I you know I, I took uh, classes on on plumbing and electrical and and uh, welding and and then as years went on I had an interest in gardening but I always like challenging myself with new things I, I love to to learn and grow and you know there's a lot of mistakes I've made over the years but you learn from your mistakes and and then you just you grow from them and you, and you move on and you learn but there's so many things I've done in my life where I've made mistakes but that's what builds character is to challenge yourself doing these YouTube videos back in July of 2015 is when we started well I had zero understanding of, of video work of even photography but so that's been a big learning curve for me but it's also been an enjoyable learning curve and I'm always constantly looking for ways to improve my videos you know to help encourage and inspire other people to educate other people and to also make my garden videos a little entertaining you know it's beautiful working out in the garden being exposed to all the different wildlife and the birds and you know this time of year here in Pennsylvania the wildflowers are blooming in the garden and and in the woods and the birds are singing their praises and all the leaves have come out on the tree so it's just a beautiful time to be out in the garden and my hope also is to help everyone find their inner farmer and just to show them how easy gardening can be even if, if your level of experience is relatively low you can start gardening on your back patio or or deck and it's just a great way to start gardening you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com and there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim and restore your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day and a bountiful garden season. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.